Well then, ladies and gents, this is it. The moment I've all been waiting for. Finally, the inaugural flight on the Honda CB1000R. What an absolute beauty of a bike. Hopefully you've already seen the reveal video and I've talked about all the gubbins which I've put on it, so let's just get on with it. I've got a weekend to kill, apparently relatively good weather, and I need to get to a thousand kilometers ready for my first service, which I've got booked in three days time. So without further ado, oh, hopefully I'm gonna get used to that. Yeah, let's get on with it. We are rocking currently total on this bike, 12 kilometers, which is pretty much the distance between home and this garage before I leave Hamburg. So let's go and get to that thousand kilometer mark, shall we? So what is the plan I hear you ask? Well, to be honest, there is no plan, absolutely zero, other than to get a thousand kilometers on that clock by the time Monday morning rolls around when the bike's got to go in for the first service. And then we can get stuck in with the proper riding. So I am literally just gonna head out. I have zero navigational aids turned on. The Garmin I even left at home. And the phone is, uh, yeah, it's in my pocket, currently providing me with no directions whatsoever. So I'm literally just gonna wing it. But guess what? The little compass actually works on top of the SW Motec Enduro tank bag. Must have put enough plastic things in there for that to work properly. What's that awesome hoodie you're wearing, Andy? Sorry, what was that from the back? What's this awesome hoodie I'm wearing? Well, this is none other than the Andy Man Cam vintage logo hoodie, which you can get for yourself from the links up in the top right, enabling you to look as cool as me, your mileage may vary, but also simultaneously support the channel. And if you're wondering why I'm bowling around in a hoodie where normally I've got a leather jacket on, underneath it, I am actually rocking the Urban Pro shirt from Knox, so don't worry, I am protected. Hashtag no jacket required. And of course, hashtag big thanks to Knox for sending it over to me to try out, as well as these beauties. Look at this, Knox Handroid Pod Mark IV. These things are absolute weapons. Currently uh, just getting used to them, wearing them in, they're a bit stiff, but with something as incredibly armored as these are, I'm not really surprised that they're a little bit rigid to begin with, but hopefully like a good pair of shoes, they're gonna be forming to my hands nicely. And, they just look pretty cool, don't they? So yeah, I am pretty much just gonna follow the compass, follow the blue patches in the sky, ultimately head east, see what I find. So uh, let's get on with it. Just as we left the river, just as we're leaving Hamburg, we're about to tick over into the first 50 kilometers of this spanky new lovely bike. Very relaxing 50 kilometers as well. I mean, obviously the engine in this thing is brand spanky new, so currently I've got it in user mode, which I have set to the torque control or traction control. Two out of three, engine braking, one out of three for a nice gentle on and off response, and power at one of three for the minimum just because, let's be honest, it's very difficult to resist the temptation just to give it full beans when you know it's there. So if I've got it restricted to start with, just giving the engine a gentle break-in. I know many people say that the whole engine break-in thing nowadays is uh, the same as tire scrubbing in. It's, it's all not quite as necessary as it used to be, but I still think while everything's new, before we get that first service, I'm not gonna kick the arse out of it and wring its neck everywhere. Give the bike a chance to wear all of its bits together before I start to really test it.
go, ticking over into the hundredth kilometer. 10% of the way there. Although so far, pretty much all of it has been in villages and by the river. So, in fact, I can actually tell you from the readout on the dash here, average speed since I started is 55 kilometers an hour. So that's about 33 miles per hour with an average fuel economy of five and a half liters per hundred kilometers. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head how much is in miles per gallon, but I'll flash it on the screen. There you go. So, as you can see, gentle really was the operative word so far with the breaking into this new bike, but I have to say, I am liking it a lot so far. It's just so smooth and the weight just seems to be really low on this thing. It feels a lot easier to flick it from side to side even than the Yamaha does. But I am afraid before I go too much further, well, I say afraid, this is a bit of a, a win if you look at it in the right direction, but I'm gonna have to stop and put a waterproof jacket on top because even with the hoodie on top, it's a bit too breezy. I'm absolutely freezing cold. So that is a immense, massive plus for the Knox Urban Pro shirt in terms of summer riding conditions. When summer finally comes back because the weather's been proper toilet here for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, even with the hoodie on top, this thing is proper breezy and I am pretty frigid. Jesus, it is proper nippy in here. Reinforced ballistic nylon or not. My nips could cut clean through this Knox shirt right now. Right then, onwards. So we've now got the Knox waterproof overlayer. So we've got the full system rock in here. So hopefully <laughs> I can stay a bit warmer now, especially in the trees here. But right, with 116 kilometers on the clock now, I think it's about time we finally tried to find some kind of twist in us because I have to be honest, the seat is pretty firm. And after I can tell you from my handy little instruments here, I've been riding for an hour and 54 minutes and my ass is a little bit tender. So I need to find some twisties to move around in the seat a little bit more. Also then need to find somewhere to get a coffee and something to eat because in the rush to get out, I've completely skipped lunch and uh, my belly is starting to run slightly more fervently and audibly than the low grumble of the exhaust pipe. So let's have it. Cluster shifts on this machine are an absolute delight. They just click into place so easy. This would be quite a nice road if it wasn't so incredibly bumpy. Because incidentally, as I probably mentioned in the reveal video, I didn't get the bike with the quick shifter. I've just got the, the standard model. So that's no quick shifter, no heated grips. But so far, thanks to these SW Motec Cobra handguards, the wind is being kept off the old naked knuckles thus far. Although it is really weird coming from a bike that I've been riding for the last three years that's had heated grips. And the one for the three years before that also had heated grips, which meant the grips were a lot fatter. So it feels like I've got really scrawny grips, coupled of course with the fact that I've got these meaty suckers on. It's making for quite a strange tactile situation on the bars. I keep wanting to try and just follow the compass. I mean, coming up to T junction, so I've got a north or south option when all I want to do is go east. It's so delightful how usable the torque is on this bike. I mean, it's it's got a reputation against again the the bikes like the Tuono and the the Super Duke R as being a bit of a gutless bike, but. It's just a very different machine and I find the torque on this so usable. Like from the village there, from 50 kilometers an hour, sixth gear, give it a twist and then you're up to highway speed without any protestation, no lumpiness, no shakiness. Bike just smoothly climbs up through the revs. Absolutely love it. And I hate to say it, next to the FZ1, this thing has buckets of torque at the bottom. Would you look at that, Dr. Oetker. This is where the pizzas and pies come from. To be honest, I've been here so long, I can't remember anymore. Is there Dr. Utka in Britain? Must be. Now I've got to... I don't want to go on the motorway and I definitely don't want to go to Hamburg. Ah, Schwerin, that's what we're after. The lovely big lake there and hopefully some kind of tea and pastry situation. 
and there's the snow dome. Oh dear. And behind that, a rather disgusting looking front of dirty, horrible, wet weather. That is not the direction we want to be going in. So let's do our very best to get away from it. No, wrong direction. That looks hideous. Oh, I can smell it as well. It's quite close. I think we'll go this way. Thanks very much. Wow, it's taken till now to find the first roadblock. Impressive. And I didn't even want to go that way, so almost unheard of. This is a bit poop still, isn't it? Weather's taking a turn south. Traffic's gone sideways and the temperature has fallen through the floor. But anyway, here's Schwerin. That sounds a bit French, didn't it? Schwerin. No, this isn't the way. This is not the way. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'll stay there for tonight then. Yeah, Schwerin is quite fancy. Yeah, that is quite special, isn't it? Oh, get in, cobbles. Uh, how terribly, terribly lovely. I think we'll have a coffee here, what what? Oh, oh, that's rain. That is definitely rain. Oh. Right, shelter for the bike. <sighs> so we can get something to eat. See you in a minute, hopefully this rain will pass. Otherwise, we'll be sleeping here. Oh, well, after half an hour of standing in the shelter over there, quick bit of coffee and pastry from that place there, looks like things have dried out a bit, so we can carry on. It's now six o'clock, lost a fair chunk of time there, so try and head a bit further east and then find somewhere to stay for tonight. Not a terrible backdrop for the bike though, eh? That is just a fine looking beast. I'm very happy with my choice so far. Let's carry on and hopefully not catch up with any more rain. So, eastward ho! Oh. It's a very quaint town though, isn't it? Uh, that's the direction I kind of want to be going in. That's where all the bloody rain is. I don't know how I feel about that. Do get to have another little look-see at this lovely schloss as well. will take this opportunity to try out rain mode as it's raining. Oh, get in! Cobbles when it's wet. I love this stuff. Cobbledy, cobbledy corner, slippery, slippery death. Right, there's a blue bit. Let's aim headlong for that. I think your indicator bulbs are broken, mate. Oh, the joys of 187 kilometer old tires in the wet. But one of the things to count on the plus side is that I've now got traction control and ABS working in my favor. So let's get on and get into that bright shiny bit.
one on my back finally. Here we are, Ludwigslust. There's a petrol station that probably would be a good point to stop. So I'm going to swing a quick UE, smash some fuel in the tank, and uh, then I'll find somewhere to stay. So first tank of petrol through the brand new bike, and yeah, it was gentle. Yeah, it was well, compared to some of the stuff we've done, a little bit boring, but it's all about the warm up, isn't it? We're warming the bike up getting used to it myself, getting it broken in. But in any case, don't go anywhere. Be right back when we hit the road again tomorrow and hopefully this time find some proper twisties. So sit tight. Well, good morning, ladies and gents. Tis the next day, one of a relaxing evening spent in the castle. What, what? Thank you, Jeeves and team. Right then. Oh, it's always the way, isn't it? Leave your chin strap until you've got your gloves on. Dexterity test for the androids. Oh, nailed it. Awesome. Right, let's wake up the neighbors and get on with this. It's a dirty habit, but I'm cheating again. Oh, f off. Oh no, it's deleted the route. Oh, well done, Google. Well f done. Unbelievable. But there will be no ranting in this video because there's a new motorbike in it. How can I possibly be in a bad mood? Especially when it seems like we're in 28 days later or something, there's just nobody about. And for once, thanks to Google's cock up, we get to do this bit again. That was quite good. Talk out of the villages. You'd just be so lazy. My word, I think a cobbled street would be better than this. You might want to write a letter to the council, love. This is in terrible nick. What? There's a hill in the middle of it. This seen better days, isn't it? Ooh, this is better. Oh, that's 300. 30% of the way there. We're probably starting to get ever so slightly closer to the edges of the tires. You know, I'm not expecting totally eradicated chicken strips from what I've been doing so far. Well, you cannot say this isn't flickable. It's just danced around that manhole cover. Definitely does feel less top heavy than the Yamaha. Despite feeling and looking like it's actually bigger. That's too much speed to be stonking onto a cobbled street. Bloody hell, look at that. Here, Margaret, there's something wrong with these horses. All right, lads. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, look at that, it's a whole circus. Nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. Halfway through the third katana tip on the S21s. I know, right? She's a looker. Just got it. I'd recommend one. I don't know though. I think you might struggle with the 830 millimeter seat height with those legs, but you know, get yourself a test ride, see how you get on. Later, zebras. Make your f***ing mind up, will you? Jesus, do this, do that. Go somewhere else, do something new. Forget the first thing, remember the first thing. I actually bunged an email to Beeline to see if they wanted to let me test their little thingy out, but they haven't deemed to reply to me. So it looks like we're stuck with ranting and shouting for now. Fifth and sixth are so close together. Hello again. Ah, uh, it's not a circus, it's an Elefantenhof. 
obviously, well, to be honest, thanks Google. I wouldn't have seen the zebras or the Elefantenhof if you'd have taken me the way I asked you to. Oh, how does anyone get anywhere with all of these 60 kilometer an hour limits in between villages? Like we're in the middle of friggin' nowhere and I've got to crawl along at 35 miles per hour. Shop. That is brilliant. <laughs> Someone's lounge. You really need to adjust that gear shift pedal or the foot peg to something because it's just way too low. They keep on hanging on the fifth and they're not getting to sick. But teething problems, isn't it? Teething problems. turning into a cobbled street tour of East Germany, isn't it? Oh, that's better. Right, I think it's about time with nearly 120 kilometers under our belt today to try and find somewhere for a coffee stop. should just about do it. Well, this looks interesting. Look at that, the Garza Kaffeestube. I think this will do very nicely. If it's open, the sign in the window says it's closed. Well, that was a delicious piece of Apfelstrudel and Kaffee. And now, onwards. Cheers! And the sun has finally properly joined the party. Look at this beautiful blue sky. Now, I had hoped to get a little bit of drone footage while I was out today. Not really sure how likely that's going to be because it turns out I've unwittingly ridden into a bit of a nature reserve area, so it's all forbidden and a penalty of 50 million euro fine and the death of your first five children. But we'll see. We'll see. There's a couple of patches here and there. I must say, the indicator button is finally starting to actually fall easier under thumb. It's actually happening here. I think this guy wants to go the other way. But also, just before our little break, tipped over the 400 kilometer mark, so 40% of the way to our 1000k limit well, target. Apparently you can actually go to about 1500 before Honda start to pester you about the validity of your guarantee and that kind of nonsense. Back over the River Havel, on the Havellandbrücke. The whole time that I was sat there having my coffee, outside on the veranda of that lovely little Café Stube, I have to wholeheartedly admit I was really enjoying taking in the splendorous view of this bike. It just looks glorious, even with all of the touring nonsense on it. It just looks like an absolute weapon, but a beautifully finished off weapon. I am really enjoying just looking at this bike. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that's a big fat box ticked. Even looking at the thing makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside, but obviously riding it even more so.
are bowling into a town that I picked purely because it's funny. Because in German, Kotzen means being sick. If you're a ganze Nacht beim Kotzen do. I say, I spent the whole night vomiting. Anyway, I am going to find a nice spot to pull up and actually do the reveal video for this bike because I haven't done it yet. You've probably seen it already. If you haven't, do check that out. Although obviously by now you've realized what the bike is. And we will continue our journey in this breaking in of the bike shortly afterwards. See you there. Right then, well, we're finally back on the road. Oh, I buggered around for nearly three hours messing around doing the reveal video, which hopefully you've already seen. If you haven't, top right as usual. And also doing a couple of roundups of the various SW Motec gear that I've got on the bike at the moment. So again, they're hiding in the top right. Check them out if you haven't seen them. Well, this means that I am now low on memory cards, low on batteries, everything is dying. The reserve lights now come on, so I'm gonna to need to fill up for the second time. And I've still only managed 473 kilometers total. So the plan is now just to head in a slightly meandery way, but ultimately head home. I will naturally try and show you as much as I possibly can during that time, but the memory cards are gonna fill up very soon. So I will take this opportunity to say thank you so very much for accompanying me on my first well, it was going to be first thousand kilometers on the bike, but I've only managed 500. But still, by the time I get home, that's going to be nearer seven or eight. So ultimately getting on for the target that I was after. But yeah, anyway, thank you so much for coming along. I hope you've enjoyed this little jaunt in East Germany. I have very, very much enjoyed it. This bike is a weapon and I absolutely love it. So if you enjoyed the video, do give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. It's all good. But either way, leave me a comment. I'll do my very best to get back to you. We'll have a chat about whatever's on your mind. Get yourself subscribed to the channel if you're not already, particularly if you've come along because of the CB1000 and you want to see more videos of me caning it around. There is lots of stuff coming up. I've got a couple of exciting trips planned and I very much look forward to sharing them with you. So I've been Andy Van Cam. You've been quite simply fabulous. I'll let you accompany me for as long as I possibly can, and then I'll see you next time. Ta-ra! can now confirm through that reluctantly created test you can get 45 well, 46 kilometers on reserve and allegedly I've still got a liter left so 50 60 easy <sighs> see you next time <laughs>